to the place where the Spirit of the Lord dwells. We're coming out of the desert. We're coming out dirty. We're, we're coming into this place because we've been out. We've seen things. We've heard things. We've done things. We've thought things. We've said things that are unclean. And as we enter into this place and we enter into his tabernacle, we've been teaching about prayer, but we can't really go into prayer if we don't learn how to come in and give thanks. we got to thank God. Lord, we got to thank you. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the small things. We thank you, Lord, for the swing on the front porch. We thank you, Lord, for the little things in life. We thank you for waking us up and giving us breath today. We thank you, Lord, for our spouses. We thank you for our children. We thank you for our jobs, Lord. We thank you for all the many blessings that we have. We thank you, Lord, for our moms and dads. We thank you for our friends. We thank you, Lord, for the songs that make us move to worship you, to praise you. Lord, we are thankful, God, for the babies. We're thankful for our wives. <coughs> we're thank you. We're so thankful for everything. We're thankful, Lord, for your word. We're thankful for the hard times. Thank we're thankful, Lord, that you forgive us for our mistakes. We thank you, Lord, for helping us get through the darkness. We thank you for your forgiving spirit and merciful spirit. We thank you for keeping us humble. We thank you, Lord, for making us stumble so that we can be humbled. Hallelujah. Let that one sink in. We're thankful for stumbling because we, are, we need to be humbled sometimes. Lord, we need to say thank you, and we can't say thank you enough for your loving kindness. We need to say thank you, Lord, for everything that you bless us with. We thank you for the struggles. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you don't change, even when we do change. Say amen. Amen, amen, amen. He doesn't change, but we do change, and we're thankful that He doesn't change. Hallelujah. Amen. Tonight we're going to be talking a little bit about the value of an attitude of gratitude. Let's turn to our neighbor and let's repeat this. The value of an attitude of gratitude. And you can't have an attitude of gratitude without being thankful. It begins with saying, thank you, Lord. But it doesn't end with saying, thank you, Lord. You have to mean it by showing your attitude and putting your thankfulness into action, which becomes gratitude. Amen. And so when we pray... We've got to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. We've got to enter his courts with praise. We've got to go to the altar of sacrifice and repent of our sins and, and let God wash us and, and look in that mirror and ask God to change us and change our garments so that when we go into the holy place and we hear the word of God, that it can taste sweet and it, it's not going to be bitter. And that light, that revelation will help us enter to His presence so that we can go to the mercy seat and that we can feel the Shekinah glory and we can come out with, a, with power and we can come out with a testimony of how good God is. We're going to read one scripture as you remain standing for just this one verse of scripture. Psalms chapter 37 verse 12 through 20. Psalms 37, verse 12 through 20. In the King James Version, it reads this way. The wicked plotteth against the just. How many of you know the wicked plotteth against the just? And they gnasheth upon him with his teeth. But the Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth 
His day is coming. Aren't you glad? Aren't you thankful that you have? Uh, listen, at the end of the day, we know that we're on the winning side. We know we're going to be victorious if we stay connected with Him, if we're thankful to Him, if we allow Him to change us, if we allow His Word to direct our path. The wicked have drawn out their sword, and they have bent their bow. They have cast down the poor and the needy, and to slay such as be of upright conversation. How many of you know we live in a day, and of course you know the devil is always like this. Up is down, down is up, right is left, left is right. Evil is good, good is evil. Their sword shall enter their own heart, and their bow shall be broken. Aren't you glad? Aren't you thankful? A little that a righteous, watch this, just a little bit of a righteous man or woman hath it is better than the riches of many wicked. Aren't you thankful that just a little bit of righteousness, just a little bit of righteousness is so much better than a whole lot of wickedness? I wish somebody believed that tonight. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken. How many of you are thankful that the Lord is going to break their arms? Hallelujah. Uh, you know, I'm really not thankful for the end of their, listen, they're going to they're gonna perish. And I'm not really thankful that the wicked is going to perish. I actually pray that the wicked be converted. But I'm thankful that I don't have to perish. I'm thankful that you don't have to perish. And I'm praying that the wicked don't have to perish, but their end, if they don't come to repentance, if they don't turn from the wicked ways, they shall perish. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and he knows their inheritance shall be forever. Aren't you thankful that you have an inheritance that's going to be eternal? Somebody say, I'm thankful. They shall not be ashamed. In evil time. Listen, poke your neighbor and say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed. Listen, I'm not ashamed when the evil people are doing all the evil around about me and I stand firm for righteousness. I'm not ashamed. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. You know, listen, when we trust the Lord and we're thankful to the Lord, the Lord's going to see us through the famine. He's going to take care of us. But the wicked shall perish. And I'm not thankful for that. I'm just thankful that I'm not going to to perish and you're not going to perish. And I'm praying that they, they turn from their wicked ways so they don't have to perish. And the enemies of the Lord shall be as a fat of lambs. They shall be consumed. And to smoke shall they consume away. And I'm thankful that I'm not going to be, you're not going to be. We need to be thankful to know that we have the Lord on our side. Hallelujah. Say amen. 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 You may be seated. Tonight we're going to be talking about the attitude of gratitude. We're going to talk about giving thanks always. Thanks always for everything. The wicked seem to be in control right now, but let me tell you something. They're not always going to be in control. Recently, I don't know if some of you have come to hear about this, but there was this last Friday. I've been studying this thankfulness message for about 10 days, and uh, I was using it for myself because I needed to be reminded to be thankful. Hallelujah. Because we need to remember that we have to be thankful for everything. It changes our attitude. Man, if I'm miserable in church, can you imagine how miserable I would be outside of church? We need to remember to be thankful. Say amen. Amen. And so there was this song that came out. It's not by a... A, a, a singer that's a, a real singer is some guy just kind of messes around and he wrote a song and 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 uh, it went viral. I mean, it's in the millions. Some of you may have heard about it, may have seen it, but it, it it's an explosion and it's a bluegrass song, a bluegrass singer, 
And he's, the title is Rich Men North of Richmond, talking about the government, talking about D.C. His name is Oliver Anthony. Actually, his name is not Oliver Anthony. His grandpa's name was Oliver Anthony. But when he wrote this song, it really kind of broke the lines between the, the blue and the red and, and, you know, the colors of our skins. And it, it really penetrated because it hit the nerve of how most people really feel, not even knowing whether he's Republican or Democrat. But, he, but he, his words kind of penetrated the hearts of people, how they really feel about government about paying too much taxes, about the evil that's going on. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 18, that we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but we're wrestling against spirits and principalities, people who are in high places, dark places, and, and they're wicked. And so this is really what the song was really about, how he was feeling, how most of us are feeling, how it connected people Without a party, without color or, or culture, it, I mean, it, all around the world people are watching. I don't know what it's up to now. Probably 50 or 100 million people have seen this video, and they're all responding to it. People weeping and crying because they're there. They feel it. But anyway, this message came about 10 days before that, and I had been studying this, and when that song came out, this is, I said, I need to teach on this. I got to teach everybody else on this because we may feel that way. We, might, we may understand why people are feeling that way, but, but for a Christian, we ought to be thankful. We know, hallelujah, we know where our help really comes from. We know the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We're not going to be like everybody else. We may feel it in the flesh, but spiritually, we ought to be thankful for everything, even the dark times. And so the title, The Value of an Attitude of Gratitude, we really find it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, in everything give thanks. Why? Why should we give thanks to everything, everywhere, all the time? Because the next part tells us why. For this is the will of God. So if it's the will of God for me to be thankful, then I want to be thankful for everything. And another verse says, give thanks in all circumstances. He didn't say give thanks only in good circumstances. He says, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God. So a positive mental attitude is essential to living a victorious life, an abundant life of blessings in Christ Jesus, is that we got to get the attitude of being, what, thank, thankful and grateful. Say amen. And so this is imperative. We must develop. Turn to your neighbor and say, we must develop a habit of being always thankful in every situation. You know what thankfulness expresses? Gratitude, meekness, and understanding. You know the best prayer that you can pray is what? Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you. It shows your gratitude. It shows your humility. It shows you understand the principles of God. I am thankful no matter what comes my way, no matter what's going on around about me. This is the day the Lord hath made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it, and I'm thankful in it. Because why? Because this is the day the Lord has made. And before we can go into the tabernacle and give Anything or get anything out of our prayer, we got to be thankful. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his court with praise. Say amen. And so if we can develop a habit, everybody say develop a habit. Why am I saying develop a habit? Because it's not natural to be thankful. It's not natural to be Somebody that has an attitude of gratitude. Most of us, it's very natural to complain, to be critical, to be negative, to see everything that's wrong, and criticize everything. 
So we have to develop a ha- habit of being always thankful. Daniel developed a habit of praying three times a day. David wasn't always thankful. He had to develop the habit of being thankful. Somebody say amen. Amen. And so if we can develop a spirit or a, a attitude of being thankful and a gratitude, listen, our actions will show. We can't just say, I'm thankful, and then not act like we're thankful. So the attitude is, I'm thankful, and my actions shares with everybody else that I am thankful. It's easy to say I'm thankful, but not really be thankful. I say, oh, thank you, Lord. And then I go, I'm complaining about everything. Oh, my God. <laughs> so you're not really thankful. Your attitude tells us that you're not really thankful. Help me, Jesus. Help us all, Jesus. We will open the door to God so we, He can provide divine assistance. When we come to God and we say, I'm thankful, and we open up the door so that God can divinely give us knowledge and wisdom from heaven to help us have the attitude of gratitude. Amen. But you know what? Life has disappointments. Let me, let me say it again. Life has disappointments. Life can be discouraging. There are tragedies in life. Not everything goes the way that we want it to. But if we are thankful to God in everything, then we can have an attitude of gratitude because we understand He's in control. He's in control of everything. There's a reason for it. If God allowed it to happen in my life, God has a plan. God has a purpose. All things work together for the good for those that love Him according to His what? His purpose, His will, His plan for our lives. We got to be thankful for that. We got to be thankful for that. I know it's hard sometimes to be thankful when things happen, but we have to learn to be thankful in all circumstances and give it to God, trust God, no matter what's going on. If I know that this is the day the Lord hath made, no matter what I go through, I can be thankful. And I know I don't always feel that way, but I got to get a habit. I got to get a habit. Oh, I got to get a habit. I got to be thankful. We're not born to be thankful. We have to learn how to be thankful. Thankful is words. Gratitude is taking the thankfulness and put it into action. Thankfulness is the beginning of gratitude. Gratitude is the completion of thankfulness. Thankfulness may consist merely of the words, but gratitude is shown in your acts. The habit of being thankful must be learned because the natural reaction to disappointment is to complain or to be depressed or to be critical, to be bitter, to give up, to be angry. Hurt people hurt people. So if we choose to be hurt because we're not thankful, then it it creates bitterness. It creates anger, hatred, a a negative, oh, just grouchy, grumpy, complaining about everything, attitude. Oh, Lord, help me, Lord. Help us, Lord. We must acquire a habit to always give thanks. Thanks. It's got to be something that is learned. We've got to create a habit of being thankful. We have to be reminded, thank you, Lord, for waking me up. Thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the trials and the tribulations. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings. Thank you, Lord, for this. Thank you, Lord, for that. Whatever it is, thank you, Lord, because why? Because there is a purpose. I'm not taking anything with me. i got to remind myself, I'm not taking anything with me. I came into this world naked, and I'm going to leave this world naked, so why do I get all uptight about the material things of this world? It doesn't really matter. 
Because we're always going to complain. Adam and Eve had everything in the garden, everything except for one thing, and all they could complain about is the one thing they didn't have. And that's how we naturally are. We want what we don't have instead of seeing what we do have. We, 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 we want the things we can't see. <laughs> Luke chapter 17 and 11 through 19 describes a lesson where Jesus is moving around and he comes across ten leopards. And there was ten leopards, and Jesus told them to go show themselves to the priest, and, and they were cleansed, and, and one realized, hey, we just got cleansed. I need to go back to Jesus and give thanks. And when he came back to Jesus, he gave thanks for the cleansing, and Jesus, hallelujah, said, Is there not, was there not ten of them? But yet only one came back. Only one came back. Only one came back and gave thanks. God does a wonderful thing to us. God does a miracle in our life, and we can't go back and give thanks. Well, a lot of us are like that number. Listen, a lot of us are like number nine, the, the nine leopards. Oh, <coughs> Well, I'm glad I got it, but I'm not thankful. Because it doesn't come natural, because we have to learn it. We have to practice it. We have to, we have to get wisdom from heaven. We have to get the knowledge and say, you know what? I need to create a, a habit to be thankful. And, and we got to learn it, and we got to practice it so that it becomes a habit in our lives. Oh, you're not hearing me. We we got we to gotta create a habit of being thankful. I'm telling you, folks, you need to be thankful. You got to be thankful. If, listen, when you are thankful, things will increase. If you're not thankful, <coughs> you're going to moan and groan. I ain't got this. I ain't got that. They ain't do this. They Tell them we got we to create a habit of being thankful. Instead of looking at what we don't have, let's check all the blessings that we have and be thankful. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God that he forgave me of my sins. Thank God he, he, he took me out of darkness and put me into the light. Thank God that he gave you the wife. Thank God that he gave you the children. Thank God that he gave you the grandchildren. Thank God that he gave you the job. Thank God for all this. Instead of complaining about it. My Lord. See this woman you gave me, God? This woman made me do it, Lord. This woman you gave me. It's your fault, God. Isn't that how we are? We want to blame everybody else. It wasn't me. It was you, God. It was the woman you gave me, God. It was the children you gave me. It was the grandkids that you gave me. It was the job you gave me. It was the, the, the place you put me. Man, if you could just change all that, God, everything be good. Yeah, right. We've got to learn to practice good behavior by being thankful. Most of us are like the nine who neglected to give thanks. God does wonderful things for us, and we don't even thank him for it. When's the last time you thanked God when he did something for you? Some of us expect God to do it. I went to church, the Lord. I gave a tithe and offering, Lord. I expect you to do something for me. Let me, I hope you get this. Bad habits. Let me, let me say this again. Bad habits. Bad habits will lead to destruction. They are destructive. Bad habits are destructive. Bad habits destroy lives. If you get into a bad habit of not coming to church and being thankful, listen, you need to be thankful before you pray. Because let, 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 me, let, let me say it this way. 
Some of us, we come and pray, but we never say thank you, Lord. We come to church. I'm going to come to the altar. Oh, God. God, you know my troubles, oh God. You know what I need, God. Lord, listen to my needs, God. Lord, you gave me this woman. Lord, you gave me this nasty job. And you, you never say thank you. Can I tell you that you cannot enter to the Shekinah glory? You can't enter to the Holy of Holies if you don't go through the step of being thankful. Come into His gates with thanksgiving. It's the first thing that we got to do is to give thanks to God before we even go. And How are you going to praise God if you're not thankful? How can I come and praise God if I'm not really thankful for God? How can I come and praise God? What am I praising God for? I'm not thankful. How can I go to the altar of repentance and repent if I'm not thankful? I'm not going to repent to a God that I'm not even thankful for. Why am I going to come to God and ask Him to forgive me? I say, I'm not even thankful that He's forgiven me. How am I going to go and wash myself, look in the mirror, want things to be changed if I'm not thankful i got a God who will, sh- will change me? Right. Oh, God. How am I going to enter into the holy place if, if I don't change my garment? And I'm not going to change my garment if I'm not thankful to the God of heaven. I go into the holy place and I begin to read the word. Well, it's going to taste bitter if I'm not thankful. Oh, my God. I don't want that word. I don't want to change. I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I don't want to apply that to my life. I don't want to have that in my life. Why would I? Listen, you're not going to receive the word and get revelation of the word. It's not going to taste good if you're not even thankful for it. How are you going to be, listen, if you're not thankful for the word of God, how are you going to come and eat of it and partake of it and say, preach it, preacher, it tastes good, it tastes sweeter than honey, it's better than silver or gold, when you don't even, you're not even thankful. Thank you. Are you all with me? How are you going to get revelation of God's word when you're not even thankful for the God who gives you the word? How can you enter into worship if you're not thankful? How can you go into the Holy of Holies at the mercy seat if you're not even thankful? How can you get revelation? How can you you see a miracle done? How can you get a testimony if you're not even thankful because you don't even believe in God? We need to form a habit, a good habit of being thankful. You may not feel it. Oh, brothers and sisters, I can tell you I don't feel thankful sometimes. But I've got to get myself into a habit. I am thankful. All i got to do is thank where he brought me from. Remember where I used to be. Remember what I used to do. Remember, hallelujah, how much he has blessed me. Then I can, I, I'm training myself. Hey, I, I am thankful. I don't feel it, but I know that I am because I can see what he has done. Sometimes you got to wake up and remind yourself where you came from. I didn't say you were going to get up and feel thankful. Now, there's some day you're like, oh, God, oh, I want to go back to bed. Bad habits are destructive. Let me say that again. Turn to somebody and tell them bad habits destroy lives. We need to earnestly work to developing good habits, especially the habit of being thankful at all times. There was a British poet who said, we first make our habits. We first got to make our habits, and then our habits become who we are. It makes us. 
We have to make our habits so that habits become who we are. Mm. The wisdom of developing the habit of being thankful. If you look at David, the psalmist in 92 verse 1, it says, It is good to give thanks to the Lord. It is good to give thanks unto the Lord. It's not a bad thing to give thanks to God. Well, he doesn't deserve it. He hasn't done enough for me. Or I'm not worthy to give thanks to the Lord. That might be true. But you got to develop the habit of being thankful. You got to be thankful for the dark times. You got to be thankful for the mistakes. You got to be thankful for everything that you go through. You got to be thankful for everything that God does, both good and bad in your life. Sometimes you may not understand what God is doing or allowing, but it's for your own good. We need to earnestly work and develop good habits, especially the habit of being thankful at all times. We need to create our habits, and our habits will make us. Wisdom comes by developing a good habit. We must learn it. We must practice it. We must put it into action. Gratitude helps us see what is. Gratitude helps us see what is, not what isn't. Does that make sense to anybody? Gratitude helps us see what is instead of what isn't. You see, complaining, bickering, murmuring, complaining, it's always what we don't have. Instead of saying, Lord, I'm thankful for the little things. I'm thankful for the small things. I'm thankful, Lord, I have a swing on the front porch. (laughs) Hallelujah. I'm thankful, Lord, for the little things in life. I'm thankful, Lord, for the little bit of cup of coffee. Hallelujah in the morning. Not only is it good to be thankful to God and give the Lord thanks, but it's also good to thank others. It's, it's also good to thank your wife for being your wife. It's, it's good to thank people who do the little things for you. Thank you. Even if it's a small thing, thank you. Come on, I'm preaching to somebody. I'm preaching to myself. We need to be thankful for everyone who does anything. Say amen. Amen. Sometimes we have, to, we have to make it a habit. Let me see. What can I be thankful for today? Oh, yeah, Brother Mike did this for us. I need to let him know I'm thankful. Oh, yeah, my wife did the, my wife did the laundry. Let me tell her thank you. She cooked for me. Thank you. Now, around Thanksgiving time, A lot of us are thankful that we don't have to cook. And all of you would be thankful that I'm not the cook. Say amen. You would be thankful to know that I'm not the cook. We need to develop a habit of being thankful to others as well as God. Look at Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 through 6. And I want to share this scripture. My wife was reading a devotion to me one morning. I I don't remember who the author was or who wrote it. But it kind of goes along with this verse of scripture. In King James Version, it says, Blessed is the man or the woman that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. In other words... He didn't say blesses the man or woman that has a lot of money, a lot of material things, a lot of possession. He said, blessed is the man or woman who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. What? You're blessed. Be thankful you're blessed. Maybe you don't have much. It doesn't matter. You're blessed because you don't counsel with the ungodly. Blessed is the man or woman who 
does not stand in the way of the sinner nor sitteth at the seat of the scornful. In other words, if I'm around godly people, I'm not, I'm not messing and sitting and eating and hanging out with ungodly people. I am blessed. It's not about money. Although I know God does bless us in money and finances and health and all those things. But, but we're not blessed because of those things. We're blessed because we don't sit in the council of the ungodly or sit with the sinner or the scornful. Listen, we are what well, we are blessed because we take our counsel from him. Verse 2 says, but his delight or her delight is in the law of the Lord. You're blessed because you love the Word of God. You're blessed because you meditate upon His Word day and night. You're blessed because you seek His counsel. You're not seeking the counsel of the ungodly or the sinner. You're not following after them. You're looking at the Word of God, meditating on it day and night, and you're looking to see what God wants me to do. It's His will. I want His will, and I am blessed when I do that, and so I ought to be thankful that I'm blessed. Are you all with me? He or she shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his or her fruit in her or his season. His leaf or her leaf shall also not wither, and whatsoever they do, they shall prosper, not just financially. The ungodly are not so, but they are like the chaff which the wind driveth away therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor the sinner in the congregation of the righteous in other words they're going to perish they're not going to be with us say amen aren't you thankful for the lord knoweth the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly they shall perish i'm not happy and i'm not thankful that they're going to perish but i'm thankful that we're not going to perish And we should be praying for those others around us not to perish. So my wife was sharing this devotion. And whoever the author was said, I'm truly blessed. He says, I will never forget the day when I was inquiring of the Lord about his blessings. The Lord came and spoke and said, who is defining the blessing in your life? Who is defining the blessing in your life? Is it you? Is it the culture? Or is it me? And I said, show me how blessed I am, Lord. Blessed is the person that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is the one that does not stand in the path of sin or follow the sinners. Blessed is the one that delights in the law of God. You are blessed. Be thankful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed is the one whose sins are forgiven. Blessed are the ones whose sins are forgiven. Yes, you are a sinner. Yes, you were born a sinner. Hallelujah. But I am blessed because God forgave me of my sins. Hallelujah. I am blessed. You are blessed. Oh, God. Glory to God. Blessed are the ones that their sins are forgiven. You are blessed. Blessed is the one who considers the poor. Blessed is the one that allows God to correct them. Blessed is the one that keeps his commandments. Blessed is the one that hears from the Lord. You are blessed. Be thankful. And so when we think of someone who is blessed in our culture, the misused prosperity gospel, it's always about money. And I'm not saying God can't bless us with money and possessions, but that is not how we define blessed. We must look at blessings. We must be thankful. We need to create a habit of being thankful. Are you all hearing me tonight? We need to be thankful. We need to be thankful. Our attitude will change. Things will increase in our life if we are just thankful. Don't look at what you don't have. Look at all the blessings that you do have. You don't sit in, in with the ungodly. You don't hang out with the sinner. You don't walk in their, their counsel. Hallelujah. You are blessed. You've been forgiven of your sins. You don't want to be a sinner anymore. You are blessed. Be thankful. Amen. The habit of giving thanks will produce joy. Well, I don't feel happy. 
No, but let me tell you something. If you're thankful, the Lord, the joy of the Lord is going to be, listen, you're going to make the Lord happy. The habit of giving thanks will produce joy. Our thankfulness brings joy to the heart of God. Our thankfulness, believe it or not, if you're a thankful person and you, you, you have an attitude of gratitude and you're thankful for all the blessings of God, it's going to affect those around you. Amen. Instead of complaining all the time, instead of seeing all the negative of everything, instead of being critical about everybody, you know what? If you're thankful, people around you will feel the presence of the Lord and the joy of the Lord. Do you really believe that? Our thankfulness brings joy to the heart of the Lord. You need to be thankful. It brings joy around others when they feel your thankfulness around them. They feel the spirit, the joy of the Lord. The habit of giving thanks will strengthen our faith in God's goodness. Let me say that again. Our, our thankfulness will strengthen our faith in God and His goodness. When we're thankful, we're going to increase. Oh, I wish somebody believed that tonight. I pray that we could all be better. Paul encouraged the Philippian church. He said, when you make your petitions to God, give it with thanksgiving. Do everything with thanksgiving. 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 Lord, I thank you that you hear my prayer. Lord, I'm thankful you know what I have need of. Lord, I'm thankful that your will is going to be done. Lord, I'm thankful, Lord. Hallelujah. I come with a thankful heart. You know what? When you're thankful, you don't really sit there and require much from God. When I come, thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings, it's hard for me to get a big list and say, God, I need this, 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 and this. But why? Because I got a thankful attitude. I got a grateful attitude. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When you are thankful and great, listen, listen, you don't want as much when you're thankful. When I'm negative and I'm complaining and I'm criticizing, I always need more. Never enough. I don't care how much you have. You're still not going to be happy. I can get a better car. I can get a bigger, better home. Now, except for me, Everybody else can say, I can have a better looking spouse. But I already got the best, so you guys, you can't get the best. Say amen. Hallelujah. I want a better job. Say amen. We need to create a habit of thanksgiving because it will, ex listen, it will increase our capacity to love. If I'm thankful, I will have a greater capacity to love other people. I will have a greater capacity to love myself. I will have a greater capacity to love my children, my grandchildren, my family, my neighbors, my friends, my coworkers. Everything will increase if I'm thankful. We are commanded to love one another as ourselves. If we have a habit of being thankful, our love for our family members will increase. If we have the habit of being thankful, our love for our friends and associates will increase. If we have a habit of being thankful, our love for our God will increase. And, and then you know what? Then, Sister Edna, we're going to recognize how much God has actually done for me. We don't see how much God has done for us when we come complaining. God, you gave me this way. God, why can't you give me a better job? God, why can't I feel better? God, why can't everything be different? Well, it's hard to recognize God's done anything for you.
We need to create a habit of being thankful. It increases our love language in all areas. And no doubt we are most miserable people. Can you imagine half of us, if we weren't in church, oh my Lord, we would be most miserable. Man, if you're miserable in church, I would hate to see you outside church. My Lord. If you didn't have God, oh Lord, help us all. Say amen. I don't know where I would be without God. My Lord. Give thanks to God. You know what happens is our attitude becomes more optimistic, more positive when we're thankful. We believe God for more. We believe God can do more. We believe God's going to do more. We believe God can do more. We believe that God can do all things. We, we understand that all things work together for what? For those that love Him according to His what? His purpose. His will. His plan for our lives. And so with, with a thankful heart and a thankful mind, everything kind of changes. If we are not thankful, we're going to just complain about what we don't have. Be thankful for the truth. It's easy to be, listen, it's easy to be critical, negative, complaining, and all that. Listen, you know what's harder is to wake up and say, Lord, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I realize everything that you've done. I'm thankful, Lord, that you are a merciful God. God, I'm thankful. We all should be saying, God, I am so thankful because you're merciful because I don't deserve it. You know what I said last night. You know what I thought last night. You know what I did last night. You know what I watched. You know what I listened to. You know my attitude. Lord, we ought to be thankful that God is a forgiving, merciful God, and we ought to be thankful for that. If God wasn't merciful, man, we'd all be in a lot of trouble. Say amen. Amen. Being thankful. You know what, being thankful, it, it changes reality. It makes us more optimistic. When we're thankful, we, we have more, listen, we, we, we can dream more. We can envision more. We can trust God more. The habit of giving thanks always adds beauty and joy to the privilege of living for God. Say amen. How many of you know it's a privilege living for God? It's a privilege living for God. I'm thankful that God allows me to live for Him. I'm thankful for His mercy and His goodness and His kindness and the revelation of His Word. I'm thankful for everything that He does. Instead of moaning and groaning about negative things along the road of life, how many of you realize there's a lot of negative out there? There's a lot of stuff that don't go the way that we would like for it to go. But you know what? I'm thankful. I'm thankful. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice. I will be glad. I don't care if there's a hurricane. I don't care if it's a blizzard. I don't care what's going on around about me. This is the day the Lord hath made. And I'm thankful. Some of you said, how can I be thankful in the situation that I'm in right now? Be thankful because God has a purpose. God has a plan. Instead of moaning and groaning and complaining and being negative along the road of life, we, can, we should be grateful. Developing the habit of being thankful in every circumstance, it's imperative to living the victorious life that Jesus wants us to live. You know, Thanksgiving, there was a man and woman sitting at the table, and they had their turkey and their, their, their potatoes and their stuffing and, and all the sides on there. And the man goes, why are we thankful? We can't pay our bills. The woman says, be thankful you're not the creditor because they're not getting paid. (laughs) It's all how you look at it. Be grateful because when we're grateful, we have a grateful attitude. Listen, it makes sense of our past. It brings peace today. It creates a vision for tomorrow. 
Gratitude brings comfort, peace, and vision. See, if you're not thankful, you're not going to have comfort. You know why you're not going to have? You're not going to be comfort. Listen, you're going to be miserable. You're going to be bitter. You're going to be angry. You're going to be questioning, questioning everything that happens around about you. But when you're thankful, it brings comfort. It brings peace. And it brings vision of tomorrow because I have hope in things I don't see because I know the God. Hallelujah. I know the God, and the God is in control, and I need to be thankful. He's going to work it out. He's going to work it out. He's going to give me a vision. He's going to give me a dream. We need to recognize that if we're ungrateful, if we're unthankful, life, listen, it leads to a life of self-destruction. We're going to destruct. We're going to be destroyed if we're not thankful, if we're not grateful. Some of us say, well, I don't have much to be grateful for. You need to. You need to be thankful. You're living, aren't you? You you have another day, don't you? You you got a God who died for you. He shed his blood for you. He he promised you heaven if you follow him. You ought to be thankful that you have it. Not everybody has that. Be thankful that there's a God who cares. We need to be thankful and have a positive attitude about the truth of God's word. Be thankful. Be thankful. Let me read this again, Romans chapter 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. You see, I, I can feel how some, how, how some people feel, but, but the Bible says that He works it all out for the good. So whatever we're going through, we need to be grateful. You say, how can I be grateful when this is going on in my life? Be grateful because God's doing something. It's a teaching moment. It's a moment to to, to be able to to, uh, uh, learn something about something because God is going to work it out for the good. So don't be upset. Don't be negative about a situation. It's God doing something. It's an opportunity. And I know it's hard to see sometimes. But we must look to him in faith and in love and in hope. We know all things work together for good to them them that love God according to his purpose. We can begin to express thanks to those around us for little things that they do. You need to hear me. We, We don't look hard enough. We can see all that needs to be done, and we can complain about everything that needs to be done. But how often do we sit down and and say, you know what, I'm thankful for this little thing that got done. There's always things that are undone that we can complain about. Hallelujah. The devil tries to divide us. And if you're not thankful, it's going to work. If you're not thankful for your wife, there's going to be division. If you're not thankful, hallelujah, for your job, you're not going to like your job. You're going to find negative things. You're going to, find, you're going to complain about it, and then you won't have it. And then you're going to complain to God because you don't have enough money. Say amen. It is God's will for us. Everybody say it's God's will. It said, give thanks in everything, every circumstance, every situation. Why? Because it's the will of God that you give thanks. If we could just get that, if we could just, if you don't get anything else tonight, if you could get this one thing, it's God's will. It's God's will. I don't feel thankful. That's okay. It's God's will, so be thankful. That ought to be enough for some of us. If it's his will and I want to do his will, I've got to find a way to be thankful. I've got to develop a habit 
Brother Trevor, I've got to develop a habit. I've got to develop a habit. I've got to develop a habit of being thankful. I may not feel like it, but I've got to be thankful. I've got to sit down and, and force myself, what can I be thankful for today? We don't do that. We don't sit down and try to see what we can be. We want to we wanna get up and say, well, the trash ain't out, and this ain't done, and this ain't done, and that ain't done. We want to complain about everything. No, sit down first and be thankful. This is the day the Lord hath made. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to be glad. I'm thankful that you woke me up today. It's God's will. If I can get it in my, my spirit, in my mind, it's God's will that I'm thankful. You see, I can't really even go to prayer without being thankful. My prayer doesn't mean anything, Brother Travis, if I can't be thankful. I'm not going to pray to God if I'm not thankful to God. I'm not going to repent if I'm not thankful for what God has done. I can't go through the tabernacle plan. I can't do it if I'm not thankful. If I don't enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, I'm not going to go to the altar of sacrifice and repent. I'm not going to go look in the mirror and see what I can change. I'm not going to get into his word, and it's not going to taste good. It's going to taste bitter if I'm not thankful. I'm not going to get revelation. I'm not going to get revelation. I'm not going to get revelation of His Word if I'm not thankful. I'm not going to experience the supernatural miracles and healings. People, devils cast out and people healed and people filled with the Holy Ghost. People baptized in Jesus' name. I'm not even thankful. How can I expect God to do all this if I'm not even thankful? My God. How can I understand God's word if I'm not even thankful? Oh, Lord. It is God's will for us. Let's stand. It's God's will. It's God's will that we're thankful. If we don't get anything else, what I said tonight, it's God's will. It's God's will that we develop a habit of being always thankful. We're thankful that somebody walked in tonight. Amen. I don't know, hallelujah, what his name is, but thank you for coming. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for loving us who are unlovable. Thank you, Lord, because I don't deserve it attitude of gratitude we take what we're thankful for and we put it into action god will help us his goodness we pray that god opens up our eyes to his goodness be thankful let us ask him to help us to be thankful we ought to pray hallelujah after we say thank you lord help me be more thankful That should be our first prayer. Thank you, Lord. I praise you. But, Lord, I need you to help me to be more thankful. I need to be thankful for the little things. I need to be thankful for the big things. I need to be thankful for all things. Lord, if I'm going through something, it's because you want me to get stronger. Lord, I got a little struggle going on. All he's saying is, trust me more. I'm trying to break you. I'm trying to mold you. Right. Say amen. amen. Lord, help me. Help us. Don't let the devil divide us. Develop the habit of being thankful. It's not even an option. It's God's will. Right. These altars are open. I wish you would come right now. If you don't, listen, you don't have to pray for anything else. Just be thankful.
Just be thankful. I'm thankful that I'm here. I'm thankful that I'm breathing. I'm thankful that you shed your blood. I'm thankful that you love me. I'm thankful that he called <laughs> I'm thankful, Lord, you forgave me. I'm thankful, Lord, you're there for me. Lord, when I'm lonely, God, you are there. Lord, when I'm struggling, you are there. Lord, I'm thankful for your precious word. Give thanks. Give thanks. It's God's will. Give thanks. It's God's will. Give thanks. It's God's will. Was there not ten? And yet only one of you came and gave thanks. God does a miracle for you, and you can't give thanks. Oh, God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for putting people in my life, God. Lord Jesus, whatever they do, I'm thankful for them, God. God, I'm thankful. I'm thankful even for mistakes of others, God. It gives us an opportunity to minister, God. Lord, we're not here to be critical. We're not here to judge. We're here to pray for. We're here to encourage others. We don't judge. We pray for them. We encourage them. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Oh, give thanks. Oh, come on, really give thanks. It's God's will. It's God's will. Ha ha, la bohusha. Oh, My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody needs to hear this. Oh, God, I need to thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Lord, there's a world out there, so much pain. So discouraged, so hopeless. We thank you, Lord, because we have hope. We thank you for that hope. Oh, God, we ought to... Oh, Ramoshata. Folks, we ought to be thankful we have hope. We don't look to D.C. for hope. We don't look for... People in dark places that are wicked and, and they're in high places to help us. We have the Lord. We have hope. Thank you, Lord, for the hope. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody needs to get this. Whatever you're going through. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're going through, be thankful. Be thankful. God's going to give you the power to see you through. Oh, be thankful. Look, it's an opportunity to thank Him because He's going to help you. He's going to give you strength. Woo! Hallelujah. My God. God, I thank you, Lord. You're going to increase my love. You're going to increase my love because I'm thankful, God. You're going to increase my love for others. You're going to increase my love for you. You're going to increase my love, oh God, for myself even. I'm thankful, God. I'm thankful, God. Oh God, let's wait on the Lord. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Oh, we are so thankful. I got to stop being critical. I got to stop being negative. Hallelujah. Got to stop being Someone who cannot see the dreams or visions that God's giving. I'm thankful because they're going to happen. I'm thankful. God is preparing a place. 
Mansion in the sky. Eternal, eternal, eternal. I'm thankful, God, that I am not going to perish and burn in a lake of fire. I pray, God, that you deliver others from that. God, we are not thankful that the perish or, or the, the sinner is going to perish or the wicked is going to perish, but we're thankful because you're going to deliver some of them. They're going to be converted. They're not going to be burning. They're not going to go to a lake of fire. Oh, God, because of your mercy, because of your love, because of your grace, because of your blood. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you pray for somebody right now? Lord, I'm thankful for my brother. I'm thankful for my sister. I'm thankful, Lord, that I feel your presence in this place. I'm thankful that you're fixing to do something for somebody right now. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Mm, Jesus. Mm. Bless my sister. Give her strength. Bless my brother, God. Give him hope. Bless him, God. (coughs) Lord, I'm thankful, God. Lord, revival. I'm thankful, Lord, for revival. I'm thankful, God, you're, you're sending people. Lord, I'm thankful, Lord, you're changing lives. Lord, I'm thankful that you don't change. <laughs> Lord, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for a place to worship you. I'm thankful, Lord, that we have a place, Lord, to worship you. Lord, I'm thankful for our children. I'm thankful for our children. I um, thank you for every opportunity, Lord, to minister. Mm. Ha. Lord, I'm thankful. It's God's will. It's God's will. Folks, if you ever have a hard time being thankful, just remember it's God's will that we are thankful. My God. Was there not ten? Yet only one of you came back and gave thanks. The one that came back and gave thanks, he said, you are made whole. Anybody want to be whole? Ha! Anybody want to be whole? Yeah. Woo! Ha, give thanks. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I'm so thankful. And when I really think about it, I am so thankful what I could have been, where I could be, but thank God for where I am. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God bless you, brother. What's your name, sir? Lance. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Amen. Amen. How'd you hear about us? Wow. Wow. Look at that. Gratitude. Attitude for gratitude. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together and clap unto the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, don't be a stranger. Somebody get his information so we can follow up. Amen, amen. Take him out to eat. Amen. Glory to God. Fellowship with him. Hallelujah. We're glad you came, brother. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you. Dismissed in Jesus. Oh, sister, this is a, what's your name? Katina, amen. Good to have you in the house as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God.